Okay. Good day and welcome to our first recorded lecture on the topic balance scorecard. So our topic this day would be demystifying balance scorecard. So what is a balance scorecard? So for our presentation outline, we are going to look into the concept, purpose, and importance of a balance scorecard. Number two, we are going to learn what are the kinds and uses of balance scorecard. Number three, what are the perspective of the balance scorecard? So the balance scorecard is composed of four perspectives. So we are going to look into what would be the four perspectives of a balance scorecard. Number four, we are going to uh, discuss what are the steps in building a balance scorecard model. Okay, so paano tayo makakagawa ng isang model ng balance scorecard? Fifth, we are going to look into some balance scorecard assessment models in the field of human resources, in the field of marketing, and in the field of finance. Last but not the least, we're going to look into the challenges of implementing a balance scorecard as well as the legal, ethical, and biblical perspective of the balance scorecard. So we are going to um, give some implications, which includes the legal, ethical, as well as the biblical perspective of a balance scorecard. So let's now proceed to our discussion. So according to Simon Sinek, okay, we should dream big and start small. But most important is we should start. Okay? So we should always keep that in mind plus because if we are going to start, then everything else will follow. Okay? So always remember this um, quotation from Simon Sinek. He is the um, author of The Golden Circle. Okay? So he said, dream big, start small. But most important, start. Because that would be the primordial point uh, of all the endeavors that we are going to do. Okay? So first, we are going to uh, discuss the concepts, purpose, and importance of the balance scorecard. So what is the difference of the BSC or the balance scorecard with other performance measurement techniques? So ano pong pinagkaiba ng balance scorecard? Why, why is there a need to do a balance scorecard? Diba? Anong pinakaiba ng balance scorecard sa ibang performance measurement techniques, di ba? So, I believe that you have a subject, okay, this uh, semester about performance uh, measurement systems. Then, uh, one of the things that we should look into is how a balance scorecard, okay, could be implemented as a performance measurement technique. Okay? So, let's now proceed. Taking, for example, this one class. Uh, the typical income statement. Okay, so ano bang isura ng isang typical income statement? So you start with your sales, followed by your cost of goods sold, then deducting your cost of goods sold or your cost of sales with your sales, you're going to uh, derive your gross profit. Gross profit less the operating expenses, that would be your operating profit. Okay? So this is the typical income statement. But uh, how can we increase our profit? Diba? That is one of the reasons or yan ang isa mga gustong gawin ng isang business. Paano natin mapapataas ang ating profit? Okay? So one reason is we could increase our sales. Okay? So increasing sales um, theoretically will result in higher profit. Ano pa ang pwede natin gawin? Ano pa ang pwede natin gawin guys? Another thing that we could do is to decrease our cost of sales or our cost of goods sold. Because yung cost of sales natin is an example of an expense. Diba? So meaning, itong expense na to, pag bumaba, ang effect niya sa profit would also increase. Okay? Next, we should always be, uh, we should also decrease our operating expenses. Diba? Sabi natin, kapag bumaba ang operating expenses, the tendency is that tataas yung ating profit. Okay? So yun yung uh, yun yung kanyang relationship. Okay? However, etong mga to guys, okay? Etong sales, etong cost of sales, at etong mga at etong operating expenses. Maraming mga factors po ang nakaka-affect diyan. Okay? So hindi naman natin basta-basta magagawa yung mga yon. Napataasin yung sales or pababain yung cost of sales o pababain yung operating expenses. So there are things that we should consider. Okay, ano yung mga yon? Number one, ang sales natin is 
uh, is from our customers. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, kapag kayong customers natin, guys, is satisfied, okay, the tendency is that they will have repeat sales. Diba? So, magre-repeat na naman sila ng sales. So, once that your customer is satisfied, bibili ulit siya sa'yo and tataas yung sales mo. Tama ba? Okay? Next, yung cost of sales naman natin is due to improvement of processes and procedures. Diba? Ano ba yung mga nakas nasa cost of sales natin? You have your direct materials, okay? You have your direct labor as well as your overhead. And itong mga to, with the proper utilization, okay, of our processes and our procedures, we can minimize, diba? Pwede nating mapababa yung ano, yung cost of sales natin. Okay? If, eh, example, yung materials natin. Kung dati, marami tayong waste. Okay, marami tayong waste or marami tayong mga spoilage. Kapag ka na-improve natin yung processes and procedures, ang mangyayari is that ano, yung cost of sales natin, bababa. Kasi nga, yung mga yun, nasasama. Di ba? Nasasama siya sa cost of sales. Lalong lalo na kapag ka mga normal loss, yung mga, ah, ano na yan, yung mga waste na yan. Di ba? So the tendency, pag napaganda natin yung ating process and, processes and procedures, bababa yung cost of sales natin. Okay? Next, yung operating expenses naman natin. Saan ba natin kinukuha ang operating expenses? Ano ba mga example ng operating expenses natin? You have your salaries, di ba? Salaries and wages. You have your, uh, ano pa ba? Ano pa ba yung mga expenses ng salaries and wages na admin, di ba? Selling, admin, general expenses, di ba? So, uh, kapag kayo mga, uh, mga empleyado natin, okay? Yung mga empleyado natin, they are satisfied, okay? The tendency is that uh, ka contribute sila sa employee growth or magkakaroon sila ng employee, employee growth, di ba? And also, kapag uh, nag-improve tayo ng processes and procedures, the tendency is that bababa din yung ating operating expenses, okay? So kung nakita nyo guys, di ba? Itong mga, itong different na mga uh, factors, okay? Kung saan nakaka-apekto yung profit is may kinalaman pala siya, di ba? Sa employee growth, sa improvement of processes and procedures, as well as sa customer satisfaction. Okay? So, itong mga tok guys, okay? Yung profit, okay? Yung operating profit natin. Number two, people. And number three, our planet. Ito yung ating triple bottom line, di ba? Nakita naman natin, the operating profit, that is our first bottom line. Ang second Uh, bottom line natin would be people and ang third bottom line natin would be our planet. So that is sustainability, di ba? Okay. So itong tatlong to, that would give us sustainability. Okay, sustainability. So nakita nyo, class, di ba, yung apat na kailangan nating tignan. Okay? Yung apat na kailangan nating tignan para magkaroon tayo ng sustainability. That is your profit, customer satisfaction, the employee growth, and the improvement of processes and procedures. So ngayon, may hint na kayo kung ano yung mga sinasabi kong mga perspective na ating balance for now. Okay? So, ang, ang ibig sabihin, guys, ng balance scorecard is a strategic management performance metric that is used to identify and improve internal business function and their resulting outcomes. Diba? Sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, Uh, pag kayo mga businesses, okay, if the businesses will improve, di ba, the customer satisfaction, yung growth ng employees, as well as the procedures and processes, ang tendency is that magkakaroon ng ano, magkakaroon ng increase in profit. Yan. So, tandaan plus ha, ang balance scorecard is a strategic management performance metric. So, itong concept na to guys, is nanggaling kay Dr. Robert Kaplan at kay David Norton. So, si Kaplan at saka si Norton, they are the proponents of the balance scorecard. So, they developed the balance scorecard as a performance measurement framework. Okay? So, they propose the balance scorecard to be a performance measurement framework which means that it would be used for a business to measure the performance. Okay? Pero, anong pinagkaiba nito sa ibang performance measurement? Di ba, last, uh, last, dun sa last chapter, pinag-discuss natin yung 
uh, how are you going to analyze the profitability of the business, di ba? So, nagbigay tayo ng uh, computation ng return on investment, okay? Ng residual income at saka ng economic value added. So, yung tatlong yun, kung titignan nyo guys, they are financial in nature, okay? They are financial in nature. Kasi nga, lahat ng ginagamit natin doon would be, ano, would be uh, coming from our financial statements, okay? So, sa balance scorecard, okay, sa balance scorecard, they added what you call non-financial metrics. Okay? Non-financial metrics. So, the balance scorecard added non-financial metrics to the traditional financial metrics. Diba? So, traditional kasi yung ROI, RI, tsaka yung EVA. So, they added non-financial metrics so that it would give a more balanced view of an organizational performance. So, meaning the balance scorecard will measure both ano, financial and non-financial metrics of an organization. So kung makikita nyo, class, diba, this is closely related to sustainability kasi hindi lang natin tinitinan yung traditional na financial, okay, financial uh, metrics. Okay? But we include other non-financial metrics. So that is the balance scorecard. So what are the kinds and uses of a balance scorecard? So we have two. Okay, we have two. Uh, types of balance scorecard. The first one is the operational balance scorecard. Okay? So the operational uh, balance scorecard is used so that you could get a grip on what is going on in the organization. So pag sinabi natin operational balance scorecard, ito yung sa short term natin. Diba? We are just going to use this operational balance scorecard so that we could look into what is happening daily okay, in the organization. So usually, ito ginagamit natin for short term. Okay, short term uh, performance management. However, kapag ka ang ginagamit naman natin is the strategic balance scorecard, okay? This uh, balance scorecard is trying to focus the organization on its strategy and measure the progress of the strategy. Di ba? So ito hindi na lang to short term but more on the long term perspective. So ang tinitingnan natin dito is whether or not the strategy of the business is ano is good or is failing di ba so the strategic balance scorecard measures okay or evaluates di ba yon it measures or evaluates the progress of a specific strategy okay of a specific strategy so that is the difference between an operational balance scorecard and a strategic balance scorecard usually guys ang strategic balance scorecard is um what they call this one is being uh, ano tawag mo dito uh, ginagawa siya okay or it is prepared on the planning process of the business okay planning process of the business okay so what are the different uh, uses of the balance scorecard first okay the balance scorecard articulates the sequence of cost and effect relationship so pinakita ko sa inyo kanina di ba yung sales it is connected with customer satisfaction Diba? Yung, yung pagbaba ng uh, cost of sales could be uh, from the improvement of processes or could, uh, could be used okay? or could be um, linked diba? or could be linked to the growth of the employees. So there is a cost and effect relationship. Okay? Through linking perspective from strategy formulation to help okay? to communicate to all members of the organization by financial outcome. Okay, so lahat yun nagtuturo papunta sa financial outcome. So also, the balance scorecard is a measure of translating strategy into coherent link set of understandable and measurable operational targets. Okay, so sabi natin kapag sa strategy, this is just a statements. Okay, sa balance scorecard, we are going to give okay a, a understandable and measurable operational targets. Okay, so later on, I'll present to you a sample balance scorecard and okay and we are going to look into kung ano yung mga measurable targets na nakalagay dito okay so kailangan magkaroon muna ng strategy yung isang business so that it could or we could link it to the targets third is uh, the balance scorecard places strong emphasis on financial objectives okay financial objectives pa rin naman class however it measures with non-financial measures okay so the financial measures are used as leading indicators, okay? So nakita nyo klasa, ang 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 gusto pa rin naman ng business is to generate profit. 
However, okay, however, nililink natin ito sa ano? Sa sa non-financial measures because the non-financial measures are used as leading indicators, okay? These are used as leading indicators for future financial performance, okay? For future financial performance. Okay. Next, uh, the balance scorecard class also limits the number of measures by identifying only most critical ones, okay? So, dito na ulit pumapasok yung materiality level natin, okay? So, hindi lahat ng measures ilalagay, okay? Ang ilalagay lang natin dito would be the most critical one or those that could identify or could uh, translate our strategy into targets. Last but not the least, the balance scorecard, guys, highlights less than optimal trade-offs taken, taken that hurt future financial performance by failing to consider operational and financial measures together, okay? So, wag lang natin, wag lang natin i-base yung sarili natin sa operational um or sorry sa financial measures but i-link din natin yun sa mga operational measurements. Okay? So, parang sa balance scorecard, ginagawa natin ito so that in the future, hindi tayo magsisisi. Okay? Nasasabihin natin, ala, kaya siguro tayo nagka-loss kasi may mga hindi tayo na-consider. Okay? Kasi nga class, minsan blinded ang mga companies pag ang ginagamit nila ay financial measures. Okay? Pag financial measures lang. Okay? So those are the different uses of the balance scorecard. Next, okay, ito na, pag-aaralan natin ngayon yung apat na perspective ng balance scorecard. So the different perspective class of the balance scorecard, okay, is, uh, could be derived from this, uh, ang tawag mo dito, parang uh, flowchart. Okay, so the vision of the company would be translated into the strategy. Okay, so yung vision kasi that is a one statement, okay, which uh, pertains to ano ba yung gusto makita ng business in the future. Okay? So para ma ano natin yun guys, para ma-achieve natin yun, we are going to develop strategies. And yung strategies na to ay are long term, okay? Are long term courses of action so that the business could achieve the vision. Okay? The vision of the company. And these strategies guys are for, are further um broke, broken down into goals and objectives. Ang mga goals and objectives are short term na mga ano mga targets okay usually and yun yung sinasabi natin na they are smart uh, ano yung smart s for ano specific m for measurable a for attainable r for realistic and letter t for time bound so lahat na yun guys okay uh, more specific siya kaysa sa strategy okay and these goals and objectives would be, ano, number one, how do customers see us? Diba? So, yan yung mga strategies natin. Paano ba tayo tinitignan ng mga customers? Number two, what must we excel at? So, saan ba tayo dapat magaling? Number three, can we continue to improve and create value? And number four, how do we look to shareholders? So, usually, guys, yan yung mga, ano, yan yung mga ginagamit natin when we are, see, when, when we are, setting goals and objectives for a company. So, dyan magmumula, guys, yung mga perspective natin. So, we have what we call the perspective. First, we have the profit. Second, we have customer satisfaction. Next, we have employee growth. And next, we have the improvement of processes and procedures. Okay? So, yan yung ating mga goals and objectives. Profit, customer satisfaction, employee growth, and improvement of processes and procedures. Okay? So, with those four, okay, with those four objectives, nandiyan yung mga perspective natin. At ang mga perspective ng balance scorecard, we have financial, we have the customer perspective, we have the learning and growth perspective, and we have the internal business process perspective. Okay? So, apat yung perspective, guys. Ha? We have the financial, customer, learning and growth, and the internal business process perspective. So, ano ba yung mga yan? Okay? The four perspective, guys, would be, ano, would be summarized dito sa sinasabi natin. Diba? When we talk about financial perspective, ito yung mga profitability measures natin. So, lahat, guys, na nag-measure sa profitability or sa financials ng isang business, would fall under the financial perspective of the balance scorecard. Okay, so that is be, that is very self-explanatory, di ba? Basta may kinalaman sa pag-measure ng financials ng isang business, 
then it will fall under the financial perspective. Second, we have the customer perspective. The customer perspective class will look into the different market segment measures of the company. Do the company, okay, or does the, or does a specific company uh, can cater? So, kaya niya bang i-cater? Could it cater the different market segments? Diba? Kasi nga sabi natin, kapag ka meron tayong ma-achieve na uh, employee satisfaction, the tendency is that maganda din yung kalalabasan ng business natin. Next, we have internal business process perspective, which will look into creating value for our stakeholders. Through, number one, innovation process, next, operations process, and post-sales service. So, pag sinabi natin internal business process, how can we create more value for our uh, stakeholders by improving our processes as well as our procedures? Kasi nga, kapag mas mataas yung napuproduce natin, okay, then more value would be given to our stakeholders. Okay? More value will be given to our stakeholders. And last but not the least, we have the learning and growth. Okay, so the learning and growth, guys, ito naman sa empleyado naman ko, di ba? Alam nyo naman ang mga empleyado natin, hindi naman sila basta-basta nandyan lang para magtrabaho. They are our most important asset, di ba? Our human resources, okay, is the most important asset na meron ng isang company. Okay, so when an employee will have, okay, or or when employees, uh, can project diba, their growth into a company, then the tendency is that they will be more satisfied and they will not leave the company. So the learning and growth perspective, guys, will measure the capability of the employee. Okay? The capabilities of the employee. And paano ma-measure yan? Through training. Okay? Through trainings and seminars. So yan yung four perspective ng ating balance scorecard. So kung makikita nyo, guys, dito, hindi lang tayo nag focus sa financial, di ba? So, yun naman yung end goal talaga natin, okay? Pero tinignan natin yung mga iba't iba pang factors na mga ko sa profit natin, okay? So, nandyan yung customer perspective, yung internal business process perspective, as well as the learning and growth perspective, okay? Next, what are the different steps in building a balanced scorecard model? Okay, so ito yung very, very, ano, class, very uh, important, okay? So, pag alam na natin kung ano ang balance scorecard, then we should be uh, able, okay, also to prepare a specific balance scorecard. Okay, so what are the steps? Number one, we should have our objectives. Okay? The objectives, it should be carefully set. Okay? Kasi nga guys, ang objectives natin, okay, galing ito saan kanina, galing ito sa ating strategies. Okay? At ang strategies naman natin ay galing naman sa Saan? Galing sa vision. Okay? So, kailangan nakatahi lahat yan. Okay? It should be carefully set yung ating mga objectives. Okay? Number two, pag meron na tayong objective, kailangan nating makakuha ng isang bagay kung paano natin mamemeasure yung objective na yun. Diba? Kunwari, ang objective natin to get 10% return on sales. Okay? So, we, we should have a measure Okay, on how we are going to um, quantify kung na-meet or na-hit ba natin yung na-hit or na-miss ba natin yung objective natin. Sabi nga natin, what gets measured gets done. Okay, so if you could not measure it, then the tendency, hindi mo alam whether you hit or miss that specific objective. After uh, getting the specific measure, okay, we need to have the initiative and the actions. Okay, itong initiative and actions na to, ito na yung gagawin ng isang business. Okay, so that the objectives could be attained. Okay, kaya nga, ito yung tinatawag natin na implementation stage. Okay, we are now going to implement yung mga objectives na sinet natin. Okay, after which, meron tayong target performance that would be done during the planning. So, ito yung mga targets natin. Diba, ito yung objective natin. So, meron tayong target and meron tayong actual performance. The actual performance would be on the controlling part of the management. Okay? So planning, doon yung target. Then sa actual performance, yun yung controlling. So we are now going to compare the target performance of the business with the actual performance. Okay? 
So, doon na natin titignan whether the company or the specific division hit or miss its object. Okay? So, yan guys ha. Yan yung steps natin kung paano tayo makakapag-build ng isang balance scorecard. Okay? So, first, we should carefully set our objectives. After that, we are going to attach uh, measures on how we are going to quantify those objectives. Number three, we are going to do the implementation. So, what are the different initiatives and action that we should do? Then, afterwards, maglalagay tayo ng uh, target performance na gusto natin ma-attain. And, pag nag-operate na tayo, may actual performance. Okay? So, ibubunggo natin yung actual performance sa target performance. Para makita natin kung natin natin yung objectives. Okay? So, ito na. Ah, uh, Um, pag nagbibigay tayo ng objectives, yan. So, to example lang to di ba? So, sa customer, ang objective natin to be a preferred supplier, di ba? To be a responsive business partner. Yan. Pag internal business naman natin, to attain optimum manufacturing efficiency, to introduce new product in the market. Yan. So, yan yung mga objective natin. So, learning and growth, to be an innovation leader. Yan. Tapos sa financial, to succeed in meeting shareholders' expectation. Okay? So the, the you guys as future managers <coughs> excuse me you as uh, future managers should identify the different strategic objectives okay because each uh, business uh, perspective should be aligned with the specific objective okay so yan yung mga sample natin ng objectives on the different perspective of the balance scorecard okay to the balance scorecard next okay ito very ano to very Um, useful ito. Okay? So, you should do a, strate a strategy. Anong tawag nito? Strategy map. Okay? What is a strategy map? A strategy map is a simple graphic that shows a logical cause and effect connection between the strategic objectives. Okay? Shown in the oval of the map. And you are going to link it with a different perspective. Yan. It is one of the most powerful elements in the balance scorecard methodology as it is used to quickly communicate how value is created by the organization. Okay, so nakita nyo dyan, di ba? Kunwari, yung financial. Uh, Doon mo tayo sa baba. Uh, organizational capacity. So yan yung tinatawag natin na learning and growth, di ba? So improve knowledge and skills. Okay, so pag nakapag-improve ka ng knowledge and skills, okay, you can now improve offering selection. Di ba? Because you have wider skills, okay, wider knowledge, then the products and services that you could offer would be varied also, okay? So you will now have improved offering selection. Kapag ka meron kang improved offering selection, the tendency is that you could improve the clarity of the offering. So pagdating sa customer, ah, okay, marami pala siyang pwedeng ibenta, okay? At mas maganda pala yung mga binibenta niya, okay? And the kalik yun sa increase in, revenue. O, oh, di ba? Nakita nyo, guys? That is what we call a strategy map, di ba? So, sa strategy map, nakakita, nakalagay dyan yung logical cost and effect connection between the strategy objectives. Okay? So, this is a sample class of a strategic map. Then, as um, as we go on, yan, gagawa kayo ng strategy map natin. Yan. So, dun sa final requirement nyo sa akin, sa isang corporate strategic audit, you should be able to create a specific or a simple strategy map. Okay? A simple strategy map. Okay? Next. Uh, you should also specify the metric that will be used to evaluate each success measure in the strategic objective. O katulad nyan, uh, nakalagay dyan yung ano natin, yung strategic objective natin, di ba? Ang, ang perspective natin under customer is to be a preferred supplier. O yun yung strategic objective natin. So ano ang measurement Um, measurement um, what they call this one? performance measurement na mag, uh, magpapakita whether or not na meet natin yun, di ba? So, market share to key customers, di ba? So, lalagay natin dyan, uh, kailangan meron, uh, yung uh, mag, mag may measure ng ating objective na yun is yung market share to key customers. Okay? O, kaya sa financial naman, di ba? Ang gusto natin is to succeed in meeting stake stakeholders or shareholders expectation. So, ano yung mga performance measurement na pwede natin ilagay? So, pwede natin ROI or EPS. Okay? Pero mga guys, yung mga yan is only met metrics. Okay? 
later on pa natin isi-set kung ano yung ano yung ating specific target na gusto natin. Okay? So nakita niyo na ha, may perspective, may strategic objective, tapos merong performance measure. Okay? So that, those are the different steps in building a balanced scorecard model. Okay? So i-follow niyo lang yung five step na yun from the objective to the measurement, di ba? Tapos kung ano yung um, implementation stage na tapos kung ano yung mga gusto nyo mag-meet. Okay? So lahat yun, i-compile nyo para magkaroon kayo ng isang balance scorecard. Okay? Ang balance scorecard, guys, ginagamit natin ito para pang measure ng performance. Diba? So kailangan may mga measures to or may mga metrics to na mag-measure ng performance. Okay? So sa, these are some of the balance scorecard assessment frameworks. Okay? So kunwari sa HR department. Okay? Sa HR department, may tinatawag tayong HR scorecard. Okay? or Human Resource Scorecard. So this HR scorecard was published by Becker, who Hussellit and Ulrich in 2001. So this helps uh, the HR department to measure, manage, and improve the strategic role of that specific department. Okay, so may kita nyo dyan, andyan yung kanilang mga, uh, tawag dito, strategy map. Diba? Ang main strat strategy nila is to be the most, in, uh, most innovative organization in the sector. Okay? So, ano yung mga gusto nila mangyari? So, under employee growth, uh, gusto nila, they could hire more qualified professionals. So, financial naman, they could decrease recruitment costs. Diba? Paano mag-decrease ng recruitment costs? Ibig sabihin, dapat hindi mabilis ang turnover ng empleyado. Diba? Baka naman yung ibang empleyado, pagpasok pa lang, after three months, resign. Pukuha na naman, after two months, resign. Diba? So, the cost of recruitment tumataas. Diba? And sa process, di ba? Um, sa pag-hire nila, sabi nila they would like to decrease lead time. Ibig sabihin, kailangan kapag ka nag, na, nag, uh, lagay, nag nagbigay ng application, dapat ilang time lang yung matatapos para makapag-hire sila. Okay? And they would like also to be more attractive employer. So, syempre, kapag ka maraming mga businesses na naghahanap na empleyado, kailangan may mga employers na ano na mag maging mas attractive kaysa sa iba. Okay, so naglagay din sila dyan guys ng kanilang mga KPIs or yung mga key performance indicator. Diba? Ito yung sinabi natin, yung mga ano, yung mga leading indicators. Diba? Kasi nga in the future. So, yan. So, meron sila dyan target tapos current score. So, yung current score that pertains to the actual performance. Okay? Yung target, yan yung gusto nila. Okay? So, let's give an example. Siyempre, hindi natin masyadong makita to. So, doon na lang tayo sa time to hire in days. Diba? Tire time to hire in days. So, ito yung gusto nilang indicator. Gano ba tayo katagal mag-hire? Okay, ang gusto nila 25 days lang. Okay, so dapat 25 working days lang sila bago mag-hire. That is the target. However, kung titingnan natin kung ilan kung ilan yung uh, days na nagastos nila, 38 days, di ba? So more than. Ibig sabihin, ano? Ibig sabihin, hindi sila na ano hindi nila na meet so nag nag miss sila okay hindi hindi nila na hit kundi na miss nila okay ano pang example ano pang example niyan oh uh, ang gusto nila guys okay um ang satisfaction nila okay satisfaction score of manager gusto nila ang target nila 0.85 pero ang na hit lang is 0.70 o so mas mababa naman E di ba ang satisfaction score dapat the higher, the better. Okay, so na-miss na naman nila yun. Okay, na-miss na naman nila yun. Okay, so yan yung isang specific scorecard. So ganun din sa ibang businesses guys. Okay, sa ibang businesses. Maglalagay din sila ng strategy, tapos maglalagay sila ng indicators, tapos uh, target, tapos i-compare nila yun with the actual, uh, actual operations of the business. Okay. So that is the HR, HR scorecard or a specific uh, BSC okay, framework in the human resource department. Ano pa? Meron naman tayo yung sa marketing perspective naman. Okay? So this is from uh, ITSMA. Okay? This is the service, services marketing balance scorecard. So we have only selected metrics. Pag sinabi natin selected metrics, ito lang yung magbe-measure. Okay? Hindi, natin, hindi na nilagay dito yung strategy map nila, hindi na rin nilagay dito yung actual target nila. At, sorry, yung target nila at saka yung actual performance. So this is also, this is only for the metrics. Okay, so you could, excuse me, you can see there the different metrics na isang business. Okay, so you could read that. 
O ano yung mga kakaiba dito? Example, sa customer, di ba? Meron silang social media sentiment, di ba? So as marketing, tinitig na mo rin social media ng business, di ba? Ano pa? Brand equity and reputation. Di ba? Sa HR, walang ganyan, di ba? Kasi they are more on the hiring, selection, and training of employees, okay? Pero sa marketing kasi, they they give high regard to brand equity and reputation. Kaya kung makikita nyo dito guys, ang tinitignan talaga nila would be on the customer. Okay? Kasi sila yung talagang ano, sila talaga yung makatulong para mag-generate ng mas mataas na sales. Okay? So sa financials nila, di ba? Ano yung makakaiba dyan? You have pipeline velocity. Okay? So pag pipeline velocity, that is the um, parang mas mabilis okay, na pag-action sa mga orders. Ayan. Di ba? So marketing pipeline contribution. Di ba? So, ano naman yung mga nakakontribute ng marketing efforts sa pipeline velocity. Ayan. So, 